Constructing a wind farm is a big job. At EDP Renewables, we want our partners to know exactly what to expect before entering into an agreement with us. What follows are some of the main steps we take throughout the construction process. From collaborating with local residents and authorities, to upgrading public roads and restoring the land once construction is complete, at EDP Renewables, we strive for excellence, transparency, and open communication every time we build a wind farm. Collaboration. EDPR prides itself on becoming part of the community and working with landowners, with uh, local authorities. It's extremely important to work with the local authorities because they are the ones who will set, you know, what some of the rules and regulations and, and guidelines by which we have to construct. So we have to involve them at the very early stages, whether that's the county road commissioners or the school districts, the school boards, etc. We collaborate throughout the project uh, with our landowners. Our reputation is very important to us. You know, we're not perfect. There's, there's times things don't go right. So anytime I hear a landowner's had a bad experience, you know, I want to get to the bottom of it and find out how we can fix it. Our projects are large projects. A lot of the local contractors that we use are rock quarries, which provide the, the aggregate for the roads and concrete suppliers for the foundations, fencing contractors, as well as all the truck drivers that are required to haul this material around. We bring a lot of jobs during the construction cycle, and then a number of jobs too that stay for 25, 30 years as the wind farm operates and produces. The landowners wanted a local contractor uh, to do all the drainage work. Someone they knew and trusted, and with me knowing probably 90% of all landowners and or the tenant farmer has been uh, good for, for me and EDPR. Site preparation. Site preparation begins with identifying environmentally sensitive areas, staking easements, and marking the location of existing infrastructure. Trees, rocks, and other large obstructions may be removed. Surveying is very important to the engineering and construction aspect. A survey team will go out and stake the area, whether it's roads or collection systems, they'll mark the center line and uh, the area around those stakes are, are cleared so that the work can begin. The next step is we come out and we start clearing the trees and the brush in the limited areas that have been surveyed across the landowner's properties. Construction compound and laydown yard. One of the key pieces of, of building a construction project is the office area, which we call the laydown, and that houses all of the office trailers and provides storage for a lot of the equipment. Clear it out, gravel it, and uh, use it for construction traders, for parking, for delivery of smaller components. The larger components, they're delivered directly to the pad where they're going to be. We don't want to double handle nacelles, blades, tower sections. Road construction and upgrades. So when we build a project, oftentimes we have to make some improvements to the bridges, the roads that are in the area. The reason we have to upgrade the county roads is because we have large, heavy deliveries that are coming that these roads were never designed for. And if we don't do the improvements, then the roads can't handle that and will just deteriorate very quickly. Our engineers look very carefully at our transportation plan. You know, we, we study the roads, make sure that there's no clearance issues. These are often very tall loads, they're long loads. We need to be able to make all the turns. Many of the turns are too tight. And so we have, actually have to build a temporary radius to allow the component and the trailer to make that turn. The condition of the roads after the project's done is supervised with our highway commissioner. It's his responsibility to look over them, maintain them, and do upgrades if it's necessary. This really helps our taxpayers out from a county commissioner's standpoint as we're able to upgrade roads that we would not have financially had the, uh, the tax dollars to do that. So in addition to the county roads that we use, we build access roads through pastures, through farm fields, uh, to get to the turbine pads themselves. The access roads are built in a variety of different ways, depends on the area of the country. The design of the private access roads is really driven by the geotechnical work or when we go out and we study what the subsurface conditions are like, meaning the specific soils and the moisture levels in those soils. The road had a lot of value to us. Um, we were having a lot of accessibility problems. 
to haul grain off of the farm, and so that road was going to be a big benefit to us. Collection system. Underground collection cables are installed using either trenching or boring techniques. These cables transport the energy produced by the turbines to the project's central substation. Our collection system design includes trenches. One of the reasons for this is that it allows the farmers to continue to farm their land without any impacts. We reel out the cable, bury it, do splices underground. In certain areas where trenching isn't a viable option, we actually use specialized equipment to bore underneath to install the cables. Common examples would be wetland areas, existing access roads, or other existing infrastructure. Collection drain tile is very important and it's very prevalent throughout the, the properties. If it's not repaired correctly, you'll have problems in the field. And so we put every effort into making sure we get drain tiles corrected. We always try and hire local contractors that oftentimes the same contractor that installed the drain tile originally will be the one making those repairs of these cuts. All of a sudden they're starting to dig a hole and they hit a brand new tile we put in just two or three years before that. That would be my job is to move that drain tile around the turbine. Turbine Foundation. The foundations are designed to anchor the, the turbines. At every turbine foundation, we take soil samples and we make sure that that foundation is designed specifically for that turbine, for that soil type. The first step, they excavate the, the hole. Uh, second step, they build a steel rebar cage. And then the third step, they actually pour the concrete. These foundations are anywhere from 50 to 60 feet uh, diameter, so they're very large. Uh, they're made anywhere from 350 to 650 yards of concrete, which is 35 to 65 truckloads. So uh, once we start pouring foundations, it's, it's a big job. After construction, the exposed foundation is much smaller than what is underground, allowing farmers to maximize their use of the land. Turbine erection. Once the foundation's built, we build a crane pad and prepare for the turbine erection. These are some of the largest cranes in the world that you'll see. Start with a base section and the four sections of the tower go up. Uh, the nacelle that sits at the top of the tower, that's where the gearbox, the generator, a lot of the electronics reside. You know, that's one of the heaviest lifts that we do. And once it's set up, the uh, three blades can be stabbed. That's one of the more spectacular parts. These very large cranes lifting very large components and stacking up the tower. The landowners really get excited and really love to come out. And this is something that they'll remember for the rest of their lives and they can tell others that they got to see this equipment being installed. Substation and generator lead line. The project substation is really the nerve center of the whole project. This is where all the power from all the turbines is collected into one central point. Due to the high voltage and the electrical equipment, this, these substations have to be protected and are surrounded by such things as a security fence as well as electronic monitoring equipment. Once we have the power at the project substation and stepped up to the grid voltage, we connect it to the grid with a generator lead line. And it may be as short as a few hundred yards to an adjacent switchyard, or it could be 15 miles to a distant substation and or switchyard. Oftentimes, the construction of this includes drilling large foundations for steel poles. EDPR does try to minimize the use and the length of these generator lead lines, but where they are required, we do compensate the landowners. Operations and Maintenance Building. We build O&M buildings for the teams that will be here for the life of the project. This is where the operations teams and the contractors will actually have their offices permanently and will communicate and coordinate all the efforts for the operations and maintenance of the project. These will include the technicians that actually climb and maintain these turbines on a daily basis, as well as our site management teams that will oversee and monitor the operation of the projects on a 24-hour basis. Sometimes we build these from scratch. Other times we actually convert existing buildings. It just depends on proximity to the nearest town uh, and what makes the most sense. Restoration. 
Once the project is commissioned or generating power, then we have to go back and actually start doing reclamation, which involves removing and restoring some of the temporary improvements which were initially installed. That involves reclamation sometimes of crop areas that were maybe temporarily uh, peeled back in order to build something. One of the goals of the restoration is to return the property back to as close as possible to its original conditions and to minimize our impacts, which allows the farmers to actually maximize or optimize the use of their land as it was before. Once they're finished, put the black dirt back in, we farm right around that windmill. In the unfortunate event when a drain tile, for instance, uh, may have been missed during construction, a lot of times that gets discovered in the spring and that will be covered under the reclamation as well. But as they trench, there's someone right there all the time watching for tile, and he could miss some tile. But if you have a problem, they'll come back and fix it. An important part of restoration at the end of the project is making sure that the roads are back to the original condition or even better. Before the first construction started, we had a lot of what ifs. I, I'm really proud of we took the step and took a chance, and here we are with phase five. You're going to be hard pressed in this county to find a negative side to what's happened with us here. I'm really glad we took that step.